Confetti, you've returned. Let me know when you are ready to commence. Let's begin. Very well. Your new shell is right over there, awaiting your transfer. My new shell. Correct. Protocol dictates we should place the assessment data in the most secure storage solution available, tier 6 or higher. That Series 11 shell should do nicely. That should make waiting for the Ithaca far simpler. Understood, 6. I will transfer when ready. Knowledge. You may open the activation pod via the console over there. I will attempt further optimization of the beacon in the meantime. I'll prepare the transfer. Initiate through your ARM computer when you're ready. Shields at 95%. Transfer appears complete. Please confirm, 13. I am online. Acknowledged. You are now integrated into the activation bay's power grid, which I have connected to a mobile reactor. It should provide ample power for both you and the beacon, especially once you've engaged your hibernation protocol. I will do my best to keep you and the power supply safe. Acknowledged. Delta-6, will you let me know if the anomaly reappears? Peculiar. No prudent. Very well. Initiate hibernation when ready. I've set the protocol for timed disengagement so that we may awaken for the Ithaca's approximate arrival. Excellent. It is unlikely anyone else will arrive in the meantime. Indeed. Ready when you are, Jack. Good luck, Delta-13. Delta-6, this is Delta-13. What is your status? Delta-6, status. I'm not picking them up on sensors either. However, there is a high game broadcast coming through. From the Ithaca. I'll patch it in. This is the SCI Ithaca automated nav transponder. Correction burn initiating. Three, two, one. The vessel is passing by on its way to Earth. Then, as anticipated, the beacon has failed. Effectively, we are witnessing the origin of the biomass outbreak. Correct. This does appear to be the final moment from which the ensuing series of events could be changed. A tipping point, if you will. Still no signal from Delta-6? I'm afraid not, no. Without their assistance, delivering our data on the base genetic material is far less tenable. How so? Simply put, we are back to not knowing what happens next. An Atlas team could arrive within the hour, 
or within a year. Or never. Precisely. Delta-6 would have been able to assist such a team in finding us while we're in hibernation. But without that, we must err on the side of extreme caution. How long can we remain in hibernation? The main issue is the lifespan of that mobile reactor. At current operation, it should last roughly 50 years. If we were to minimize the beacon's output, we could last roughly 500 years. But then I doubt anyone would find us. What has our best odds for success? Given that it is uncertain a cure could be developed with current technology, bringing the data back to Dr. Harlan certainly is a more reliable target. But how will he find us? He probably won't. But Lib will. Yes. She'll search for us once we fail to return. In fact, if we altered the beacon's message to one she would uniquely recognize. And time its broadcast to resume when she would start searching. Then we should be easily found, with power to spare. Pausing beacon now. I'll set it to resume shortly after when we would have disappeared. Beacon set. The next time we awaken, it should be due to Captain Rhodes having received our message. Initiate hibernation when you're ready. It's a distress call from Earth. And not the only one. I'm intercepting countless transmissions from ships disobeying orders. Fleeing Earth. We know every major event of the next 400 years. There must be some way to help. We're already doing everything within our power. We should conserve energy, Jack. Reinitiate hibernation when you're ready. What is happening? We're passing through a debris cloud. It is mostly comprised of smaller particulates of rock and ice. But the sensors indicate a denser cluster on the collision course. 
How long before it reaches our position? We have approximately 20 seconds before impact. However, the trajectory places the affected area outside our immediate position. We will experience some impact tremors, but this bay should provide adequate protection. saying the impact appears to have destroyed the mobile reactor what are our options with limited power i now estimate we will fall short of reaching dr harlan's time by nearly a century our only option now is to initiate a complete shutdown to leave all remaining power for the beacon when it restarts in harlan's time A complete shutdown would cause all non-essential data to be purged. Yes, but I should be able to preserve your critical memory banks, including the biomass data imprint. But as long as the distress call reaches the doctor and captain, they can retrieve this shell and transfer your preserved memory core. Good luck, Jack. Disabling all non-essential subsystems. Goodbye. Apollo. Initialize neural matrix transfer. Verify the hardware connection. Okay. Mapping core protocols to target. How much longer? The transfer should go much faster now that we finally isolated his core protocols. Atlas Intelligence Systems. Artificial Neural Matrix version 11.312. Initialize boot sequence. This is it. I think he's waking up. Jack? Liv? Yeah, it's me. Everything's all right. You're back on Holland's ship. The scan data, did you? Yeah, we got it. Dr. Harlan is already in the lab developing a countermeasure. But not there for hours now. I think you gave him a lot to unpack. You did good, Jack. Come on out. We'll see how it's going. The anomaly. It collapsed. Yes, we suspected as such. I don't know what happened. It was us. We fried the FPL. We wanted to give you as much time as we could. But we let it run too hot for too long. It appears they've already started another test. We'll have to wait until they finish. Right. When it happened, you know... When the FTL collapsed, I, I thought... You thought I wasn't coming back? Yeah. So did I. I was almost okay, you know? With being stuck in this crappy future. So long as it was you and me. 
But when I saw that FTL burn out and you didn't come back, just don't ever do that to me again. I'll do my best. Stand by. I'll unseal the door. Affirmative. Stand by. Dr. Harlan? Uh, you're here. Doctor, how is the cure progressing? Quickly. I was right. The data you captured in the past was precisely what we needed to complete the gene sequence. We're running one more test to be sure. But uh, I think we may have a solution. That was fast. From where I'm sitting, it's about four centuries overdue. I would think by now we can all agree time is a relative construct. What's that? New parameters are set. We're ready to run the next test. Do it. successful it worked it worked just like that it's right there on the monitor zero metabolic activity we did it congratulations doctor we should refrain from celebrating just yet we still need to determine how the treatment affects human subjects you really think there's that big of a risk it's possible we can't know for certain until we conduct a proper test Apollo's right. We need to run the human trial. Juno, prep the bio bed. I'll feed you the parameters. Affirmative, Doctor. What do you think you're doing? Taking my medicine. Shouldn't we at least discuss it first? There is no discussion. I have to be the one. Chasing down this cure has been my life's work. Right. And if something goes wrong, we're going to need your brain to fix it. Captain Rhodes is right, Doctor. If you die, no one here would be able to carry on your work. It's got to be me. Lev, are you sure you want to do this? Not really, no. But if I don't... I'm dead for sure, so... Is there no other way to assess the risk? None that are available to us. I concede this is not the most scientific of methods, but it is the most expedient. There has to be something we can... Jack, it's okay. This is the right call. Do not retract the emittery. Tell me how this is going to work? We expose the biomass in your system to a low-level energy pulse of a very specific wavelength. Absorbing this energy will effectively terminate the biomass's metabolic processes, causing it to wither and die. Think of it like a self-destruct command embedded in the biomass's base DNA. Whoever designed it knew what they were creating and wanted a way to stop it if it ever got out of control. Is this going to hurt? If I said yes, would it change your mind? Okay. Let's do it. I want to take a moment to triple check the math before we begin. Whatever you have to do. I'll let you know when we are ready. Do you know? Yes, of course. Jack? Come here. Give me your hand. It's okay to be scared. 
Was that intended for you or me? Yes. Jack, look at me. This is going to work. <laughs> oh, God, now don't you start. Go on. It'll be all right. Captain Ross, we're ready if you are. I'm good. Let's go. Confirmed. Initiating counterpart emission. Now. Oh. Live. It's all right. I'm okay. Vital signs are stable. Metabolic pathways in the infected cells are failing. It's working. Oh. Cellular saturation in 10 seconds. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Five seconds. Three, two, one. That's it. Shut it down. Lay, are you all right? I'll say one thing. I'm never going to complain about those fabricators again. Well, what's the story? Did it work? Go ahead. Tell her. Infection cleared. Oh, my God. All traces of the biomass forms have been neutralized. Apollo, is it acceptable to celebrate now? It certainly appears so, yes. Harlan, I... Thank you. Yes. Well, uh... Good, then. So long as we are just floating here, do you mind if we keep walking? <laughs> now that we know the counterpass works, we should start working on better ways to administrate. Uh, Harlan? We need both focused and wide dispersion methods. Dr. Harlan? Let's draw up some schematics and feed them to the fabricator. I already have a number of ideas that I think Dr. could serve. Dr. Harlan? What? The treatment, Harlan? You still have to undergo the procedure. Right. Yes, of course. Juno, can you prep the bed for another dispersion? It's already done. Very well. Would you like Jack to hold your hand as well? Start the procedure. Very well. Stand by. Harlan, are you all right? Yeah. Juno. Vitals nominal. Blood pressure slightly elevated, but still within acceptable limits. Heart rate 103 and rising. Harlan, keep going. Blood pressure spiking. Ten seconds to cellular saturation. Something's wrong. Five seconds. Three, two. One. Shut down. Vital stabilizing. Oh. Well, I've had worse experiences. Though at the moment I can't really think of any. Holland. What? Captain Rhodes? What is it? What's wrong? It didn't work. The biomass survived the treatment. Harlan, I... Juno, get me out of here. I'll reset the bio bed. We can try again. No. Perhaps the metrics were somehow altered between the two tests. Juno. Or maybe some cases simply require more than one cycle before clearing. Juno, stop. This isn't right. The treatment should have cleared both of us. Apollo. Yes, Doctor. The biomass sample we were testing earlier, where was it from? That particular sample was extracted from the wreckage of the Astraea. So it was the more primitive strain. That is correct. I need a specimen from this time period. Something off the station. I believe there is a sample from the research facility already seated in the cradle. 
Rotate the sample into position. Affirmative. All right, run the test again. Same parameters as before. Understood. Ready to execute. Do it. The biomass from this time period must have developed some form of inherent resistance to the treatment. That would be my conclusion as well. The treatment eliminates the biomass from the past, but any form from this time period, it will only paralyze. Though at the moment, I can only speculate as to why this might be the case. It's because it evolved. The biomass in the Astrea is still developing, still vulnerable, but the strain from this time period has been running rampant for four centuries. Nora was right. There really is no stopping it. We're too late. <laughs> Only by about one or two hundred years. So that's it. We failed. We didn't fail. Harlan? Does he want us to follow him? I have no idea. But I'm going to. Harlan? Dr. Harlan, there is a photograph in your quarters depicting you in... Out of my quarters. Now. He was just curious. My personal life is not a curiosity to explore. Dr. Harlan, I apologize for infringing on your personal boundaries. I did not intend to cause you distress. I will make every effort to avoid doing so in the future. See? Not the warmest apology. But he's sincere. I promise. Nora said the same of my apologies. So, fine. But please do not indulge your curiosity, Father. Of course. Just, you know, we're here if you need to talk about it. <sighs> something new. We learned there's a window, a certain point in time wherein the biomass was still vulnerable, when it could be stopped. Yeah, that point's long past. You're right. If only we had some way to travel back in time. Transmitting Jack's protocols back in time won't help us here, Doctor. It's also impossible without a working FTL. For that plan to work, Jack would have to physically bring a counterpulse device back with him. Something he can't do digitally. I'm not talking about digital time travel. Oh. Oh, I see. Where have I seen this before? Apollo. This is one of the Astrea's FTL drives. You and I encountered them briefly while retrieving a fuel cell from the ship's wreckage. What do you think, Apollo? Could it work? I'll need to run some models, but it's possible. What the hell are you two on about? I'll explain everything once Jack and I are on our way to the Astrea. We'd best get moving. Oh, hold on! No one's going anywhere until one of you gives me something resembling an explanation. Captain Rose. No, if you want to send Jack back out to that plague-infested garbage scout, you have to at least give a reason. 
but the longer we wait, the less chance we have to succeed. Captain, I... I know I've already asked far too much of you both, but... I have taken this as far as it can go. I need your help to finish it. Oh. What do you need us to do? Jack, you and I will make our way back to the Astraea's drive bay. You'll need my assistance to unlock the FTL housing. Captain Rhodes, if you would remain here with Dr. Harlan, there's some specialized equipment you'll need to fabricate and assemble. Oh, brilliant. Opening airlock. Jack. Good luck. Let us know when you've reached the Astrea. Copy that. Airlock cycling. Stand by. Watch yourself over there, Jack. Don't let those ticks give you too much hassle. I'm sure I'll be fine. Yeah, I know. I just like reminding you to be careful. So, be careful. <laughs> Before you ask, yes. That's an order. Exiting portside airlock. We need to make our way back to the Astrea, to the auxiliary drive bay. All right, Apollo, you're on your way. I'm waiting for my explanation. We all agree, simply transmitting Jack's consciousness into the past won't work this time. However, if we were to appropriate one of the Astrea's remaining FTL drives, the Doctor and I believe we may be able to use it to return both you and Jack to the 22nd century. You're saying we might be able to go home? I'm reticent to make any assurances, but yes, I believe it is possible. Assuming at least one of the drives is still operational. I thought you said we couldn't access the drives because of all the biomass. That was before we had the counterpulse. Well, that's great, but do you have some way for Jack to administer it? Jack, make your way to the nearest fabricator. I have a new modification for your shell. Understood. The fabricator is just to the left of the bridge entrance. Integration successful. Your new counterpulse device is ready to be equipped. I expect you'll find it quite an effective tool for combating the biomass. It's a weapon. A focused counterpulse emitter, based on a design from my own timeline and calibrated to the same wavelength as the treatment we administered via the medical pod. Cure gun. Nice. Understand, this device will only eliminate the older, more primitive biomass. The more evolved forms from this time period will just be temporarily incapacitated. Regardless, it should make short work of the biomass surrounding the Astrea's FTL drives. It's possible with more research data we could refine the treatment wavelength even further, making the device that much more efficient. This would allow the amount to discharge our shots or over here. We're ready to proceed to the drive bay. In the meantime, Captain Rhodes, I will need you to assemble a custom gantry to secure the FTL once it's in our possession. I've already fed the necessary specifications to the fabricators. Good. I'm in the mood for a bit of work. Moving out into the debris field now. Just get that FTL and get back here quick as you can. I said spend a little more time over there than you need to. Agreed. Alright, let's assume this works. Let's say you two track down a working FTL. We get it hooked up and Apollo manages to recreate a physical time jump that, by some miracle, sends us back home to our own land. How exactly are we supposed to eliminate the biomass once we're there? I mean, it's not like we can just set off a bomb and blow it all to smithereens. That's exactly what you're planning to do. 
Isn't it? Well, not a bomb so much as a device that will unleash a sudden and forcible burst of energy across a widespread area. So, a bomb? Yes, a bomb. But one that emits a counterpulse that should only be harmful to the monuments. Really? I am a tactical AI. Most of my solutions tend to involve some form of explosion. Uh-huh. How will we make this device? I mean, I could do it. But my hands are a bit tied at the moment. I can easily repurpose existing equipment to construct a counterpulse, dispersion, catalyst. A uh, cure bomb. Very well. Cure bomb. We will also need a means of transport, ideally one that can regulate the catalyst's energy signature. The cargo drones should be more than capable of assembling the materials we need. Excellent. I will transmit the details. Wait a second. How is Jack's reboot ability supposed to work in cars without the fabricator network? My design for our makeshift transport includes a single fabricator to accommodate Jack's reboot for the duration of our mission. Once we've detonated the catalyst and are out of danger, we can address reintegrating Jack's protocols into an Atlas network. Assuming all this goes to plan. Well, yes. It would be rather difficult to operate on the opposite assumption. Reach the drive bay. How's it look? Apollo, can we rely on the remaining munitions to stay in place? More or less how we expected. That bad, is it? Jack, the removal process will require access to several mechanisms throughout the drive bay. Any live ticks in the area will undoubtedly make our job that much more difficult. Understood. I'll clear them out. Our aim is to locate a viable FTL gun. We need one that is suitably infected with biomass, but not to the extent that it is overrun. The golden oxen. An accurate, somewhat antiquated metaphor. Once we find a suitable drive, we'll need to remove it from its housing and extract it via the corresponding service port. The removal process is no easy task, but I can walk you through the procedure. All clear, Apollo. Acknowledged. Now then, we should start by identifying any FTLs that are still extractable. Look for drives whose locking pins are largely clear of biomass at the upper and lower extremities. Understood. I'll see if there's a drive that's clear enough to move. Anyone able to cross their fingers, do it now. Excessive biomass infestation. These locking pins won't be able to move. Moving on to the next drive. Some biomass is present, but not enough to impede the locking pins. Now to inspect the opposite end. Some biomass infestation here, but it's minimal. Not enough to inhibit the locking pins. Stand by while I confirm the other end of the drive is clear. No use. The biomass has enveloped these locking pins. Proceeding to the last drive.
The locking pins on this end also appear to be free of any obstruction. Confirmed. Cursory inspection verified. Internal biomass growth is also suitable for our needs. Is that our winner? It certainly appears so. So we get to go? Nearly. The FTL will first need to be primed, which requires filling the drive with an ionized fluid and stimulating a hydrovoltaic reaction. Is that as dodgy as it sounds? Priming the drive is a fairly standard procedure. Moving a drive after it's been primed is most certainly not. How do we start the procedure? The drive controls are offline. You'll need to initiate the process manually. Look for an access panel on the side of the FTL drive. Access panel located. You'll have to cut your way in. Pull the lever inside and the drive will begin priming. Once the injection process is complete, I will funnel all remaining power in the drive bay to the FTL. Drive priming initiated. Injection complete. I will now attempt to create a sustained reaction by applying any remaining power. Stand by. Sustained reaction achieved. We're ready to remove the drive. Outstanding. What's next, Paula? The FTL drive is held in place by locking mechanisms at its upper and lower extremities. They must be manually released before the drive can be removed. Got it. I'll release the locks. The release mechanisms are housed within the drive lines at both the top and bottom of the chamber. You will need to cut your way in. Understood. gained access to the drive locking mechanisms. The release control is located on the drive itself, between the locking pins. Bottom locking mechanism released. Good. Once you release the upper lock, the drive should come free. Drive unlocked. Excellent. I've repowered a nearby control panel so you can complete the removal procedure. The controls will allow you to position the drive so it can be easily removed via cargo drone. Controls located. To move the drive, simply grip the interface, then slide your hand through the control. Moving FTL into position. Stay on the track. Once the drive reaches the outer wall, you can open the... Jack, be advised. 
Stand by. I'll deal with them. They must have been drawn out by the drive's substantial energy signature. Tick threat neutralized. Resuming removal process at the control terminal. Once the drive reaches the outer wall, you can open the service port to make the drive available for retrieval. The drive is in position. How do I open the service port? Multi-operator release controls on either side of the hatch. Removal process complete. The FTL drive is ready to be extracted. Good work, Jack. Drones are on their way. Copy that. Exiting the drive bay. Give the Estrella a wave as you go. Suppose this is the last we'll be seeing of her. I'm afraid that's not entirely accurate. To ensure we eliminate all the biomass in the past, we will need to generate a counterpulse substantial enough to blanket the entire Kronos II orbital sector. To do so, we will have to venture into the remains of the Estrella that were left behind in 2126 and use the ship's primary drive exchange conduit to amplify the output of the Cure bomb. Kinda grows on you, doesn't it? Not unlike a biomass infestation. So, where am I in all this? I will need you to accompany us into the wreckage. As acting captain of the Estrella, your authorization is required to access the primary drive bay. Right. Well, I've nearly finished rigging up the gantry. Should be good to go by the time the drones turn up with the FTL. I'll see you back here shortly. Acknowledged. Jack, I should tell you. If our plan succeeds, it is unlikely you will be able to return to this timeline. If there are any outstanding tasks you'd like to finish, now might be the opportune time. Understood. The L-Drive will be arriving shortly. Copy that, Juno. We'll keep her on standby until we have Jack. Very good. reaction to a wide assortment of polymeric weapons.
Captain Rhodes. He's back. Jack, over here. All right, Doc. The gantry's rigged up.